hello uh, so let's revise evolutionary biology there are uh, basically four types of evolution uh, which are also called as the scale of evolution cosmic geologic chemical and biological the charles darwin basically gave the theory of survival of the fittest and the theory of natural selection abiogenesis uh is a phenomena jahan pe organic compounds jo hai they are generated from the inorganic material uh louis pasteur gave spontaneous generation theory and he also gave pasteurization chemical evolution jo tha it was given and uh, by oparin haldane theory in which the haldane soup was created that contained amino acid sugars and other macro molecules so uh from simple molecules such as nitrogen carbon sulfur and phosphorus complex molecules are built which are the building blocks of further uh, aggregates uh, or we call them microspheres which do not have any mem membrane and from these microspheres protocells are formed and from these protocells cells are formed protocell are basically primitive cells uh, which were formed before the actual cells were formed when protocell combine with nucleic acid or when protocell contains a nucleic acid uh, they create a self replicating system known as cells the yuri miller experiment it was held in 1953 they created artificial conditions of the prebiotic earth uh, basically it was uh, thought to be of reduced atmosphere and the <clears throat> conditions that they created were in a uh, gas chamber the gases were methane ammonia water vapor and hydrogen and this hydrogen was the reason behind the reduced atmosphere of the prebiotic earth and they created a spark discharge in that gas chamber under controlled conditions uh rna what is rna world hypothesis it hypothesizes that uh rna is the initiator genetic material that is that uh, from rna the different cells or different molecules were created and it was the first ever genetic material that the world is created from rna uh how do we uh, come how did we come on to this conclusion is because that rna uh, basic can do a lot of things on their own theek hai it's a nucleic acid it forms a nucleus nucleotide it can act as enzyme basically ribozyme the rna uh so rna only transcribes and matlab iska it transcription of rna occurs and that is translated to proteins rna are self replicating they can be replicated talking about origin of life uh free atoms such as hydrogen oxygen carbon nitrogen they created inorganic molecules such as uh, water hydrogen molecules carbon dioxide methane ammonia from the inorganic molecules simple organic molecules were uh, formed uh, the simple organic molecules included simple sugars fatty acids amino acids glycerol uh, etc and from those simple organic molecules they complex organic molecules were formed and these complex organic molecules comprised of polysaccharides lipids proteins then from complex organic molecules coservates which were basically aggregates of large organic molecules that they, they were capable of self growth and division from this coservates protobionts were created uh protobionts are basically uh, the coservates which have nucleic acid in them and from these protobionts primitive cells were formed and these primitive cells are what they are lipoprotein membrane bound structures jinke andar enzyme control mechanisms are there and there is a nucleic acid regulation also in these cells uh <clears throat> lemark told that inner wand inherited characters inner wand is something that leads to evolution inherited characters are also something that lead to uh, uh, evolution of a species little or less used structures they disappear so example is that of 
Lamarck's giraffe, he observed that usually giraffe used to be short necked and they, uh, and then they started the descendants of those giraffes started having long necks. Why was that? Because the short necked ancestor used to eat uh, grass when it got uh, finished. They used to try to eat food from tall trees and when no leaves were left in the lower branches of the tree, they had to extend their neck due to which uh, their uh, descendants started having long necks. Uh, due to environmental reason, the the genetic makeup slightly oh, changed. Charles Darwin gave the theory of natural selection. We are aware of it. Herbert Spencer was the one who told about survival of the fittest. Um, just a random example. Basically, all breeds of dogs are uh, the descendants of a single ancestor that is of that was a wolf by goes by the name of Canis lupus. Then coming on to modes of evolution, first is transformation in which there is punctuated equilibrium, gradualism, adaptive radiation. So what is transformation? Basically, in this there is an alteration in morphology or anatomy of uh, the structure of organism. A small, if a population is smaller, the transformation in that population is maximum. And usually, transformation is seen in vertebrates of small isolated population. Uh, if we talk about gradualism, it is a Darwinian concept. And uh, in gradualism, there is no sudden change that happens. An organism is gradually evolving. It, it evolves slowly over the time and there is a slow uniform change throughout the time. So for gradualism, uh, the time to morphology graphs looks a little like this. Uh, gradualism was given by Darwin and adaptive radiation is thought to be due to the uh, gradualism, gradualism type of transformation. And if we talk about punctuated equilibria, in this case, for some time, so in this case, there's a sudden uh, evolution that happens. So for some time, for some time, a species remains stable. And then there's a rapid evolution that occurs, like a very exponentially it ev the evolution occurs. And then again, for some time, it remains stable. So it does not occur gradually, it occurs uh, after regular intervals and organism initially or the species of that particular type does not change for a long period of time and then suddenly changes, rapidly changes. So this is the type of graph that uh, shows the degree of evolution versus time. Moving on to adaptive radiation in, so which was the which was thought to occur due to gradualism. What is adaptive radiation basically? In adaptive radiation, organism, they uh, fill an ecological niche, the new ecological niche. Uh, they increase both in number as well as the diversity, where, where which means the, basically the type. And uh, the change in adaptive radiation is little over the time and through, throughout that time, after like when, let's say ki a species started A, uh, at the beginning of this adaptive radiation and over the gradual change and gradual passing of time, it will convert entirely into a new species. So this will be the adaptive radiation. It occurs through gradualism. Uh, what are the basic outcomes of adaptive radiation? They include, uh, there's a decrease in competition, there's a decrease in extinction rate, Species is transformed into a different descendant and speciation occurs. Speciation basically refers to the formation of new species. species. Uh, evolution is also related. Uh, so there's a, uh, there's a phenomena called reproductive isolation wherein two different species, uh, members of two different species, they cannot uh, reproduce between themselves and uh, due to that there's a maintenance of like... Uh, 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 the species uh, 
they maintain like isolated form they are maintained and there is no you know craziness going on over there due to this reproductive isolation so uh, for reproductive isolation uh, during evolution usually geographical and ecological radiation is required reproductive isolation is basically of two types which is pre zygotic and post zygotic we'll study that in uh, further detail uh, in a little while uh, coming on to divergent evolution divergent evolution is basically from a single species different kinds of species are formed so uh, they have a similar origin the single species will have a similar origin however they will uh, diverge they, they will diverge into different kinds of species one uh, two or more species so these species the divergent evolution they give rise to homologous structures what are homologous structures homologous structures are basically similar structures but their function is different and the structures whose origin is also similar so here there is a single parent species and from this three types of species are formed through the process of divergent evolution coming to a parallel evolution type the pa parallel evolution is basically the pattern of evolution remains the same however the related species they evolve in a similar pattern in different geographical locations so their habitat is at different location the basic example of this is the woolly mammoth and the elephant modern elephant so we woolly mammoth mammoth is a first species which is now extinct okay um, and modern elephant we all know about it so these two species they underwent similar pattern of evolution uh, throughout the time throughout the years however they were separated geographically and they were because they were not in a similar kind of habitat so they had different geographic group however the features of both of these they evolved parallel, parallelly so we call it a parallel evolution coming on to convergent evolution uh, in convergent evolution from different uh, species like there are uh, parent one and parent two there is different ancestry the features over the time they evolved in such a way that these species they start coming or they start looking uh, similar uh, over the uh, generation so they start having similar forms they have the parts start having similar uh, functions the structure are analogous in this case the structures of the species that undergo convergent evolution they have an analogous structure uh, in which the uh function of the particular part of the body is same however it looks a little different so they become similar at the end of this evolution cycle then talking about coevolution coevolution is basically when two organism they evolve at the same time and they these both organism are dependent on each other for their respective evolution uh so coevolution ka best example is the plant pollinator evolution in this host specificity occurs during coevolution so what happens is for plants to grow the pollinators are required to transfer their uh, pollen and uh, the plant provides the required thing for the pollinator to evolve so they are evolving at the same time they are dependent on each other so this is also called as coevolutionary escalation uh now talking about ex extinction extinction abhi tak we talked about evolution talking about extinction it's the negative impact of evolution because in this there is a rapid disappearance of a particular group of organisms they a species or the community they can entirely disappear it can be due to various reasons such as competition predation change in temperature etc sometimes uh, some catastrophic event might occur which can cause mass extinction of the species and in this mass extinction the entire population of the species is wiped away the big the, the biggest example is that of dinosaurs it was a mass ex extinction event which was a catastrophic event and the entire population of dinosaurs was wiped away um so so far mass extinction has occurred only five times uh, the catastrophic event examples of catastrophic event could be an asteroid asteroid collision uh, ocean turnover that happens rapidly tsunami sort of situation 
or volcanic eruption which occurs due to the accelerated rate of plate tectonics then uh okay so the mass extinction events that have occurred uh five times so till now the chronological or order in which it happened was the Ord in the Ordovician period, Devonian, then followed by Permian, and then Triassic, and then the Cretaceous. These are the five um, chronological mass extinction events. Moving on to speciation. Speciation basically refers to the generation of a new species from existing one. So it can happen in different ways. Uh, how is it happening? Like there are this two species. This is first species. This is the second species. Uh, so there's a physical barrier. Okay, so beginning is this is one species. Okay, this was the M parent T species. And through this, it developed offspring. Okay, this is happening. This, this entire thing shows the community. Then within the offspring, there was an ecological or physical barrier. And due to this occurrence of physical and ecological barrier, these different, the, the same uh, children of the pa same parent, they started behaving differently, they started evoluting differently, and then eventually throughout time, they formed different species, two different species, A and B. Uh, so if we uh, talk about camels, they originated first in North America during the Eocene period. And uh, this is the example of speciation about camels because camels in different ge geographical locations, they have different species of camel, which differs in terms of size and the hump that is there on the camel's back. There are four types of speciation, allopatric, sympatric, parapatric and peripatric these are uh, this is how the different four kinds of speciation looks like allopatric is basically separation due to geographical barriers so let's say there was a jungle and a river starts flowing through the jungle and the uh, organism is divided and on both two different sides of the river they create two Species. So, this is this kind of speciation is called allopatric, wherein species are generated due to separation in the geog separation because of a geographical barrier. Then uh, there's this sympatric. In sympatric, there's a genetic polymorphism. Within the same species, there's a variation that happens in the gene diversity, and due to that genetic variation, a new species starts to form. Coming on to the parapatric, in this parapatric, there's a partial spatial isolation. So, if a species is living, there's no geographical barrier that happens. But uh, if a species is living uh, in a forest, so in that area only, there will be a pa partial isolation and they will create a new species. So, that is parapatric. And in parapatric, so this will, parapatric will happen within that particular uh, space. And in peripatric evolution, it occurs due to isolation of the population at the periphery of the area that the organisms are living in. Then uh, examples of speciation, like there was a common ancestor and through those ancestors, through the process of speciation, chimpanzees started occurring and then there were humans that were created. Chimpanzees gave rise to chimps and further so on their generation and humans will give rise to humans only. However, there will be no... Uh, conversion of chimpanzees to humans. So, as people say that humans are created from monkeys or so and so, that is not true also and that can never happen also because the process of speciation happened in this case. Uh, now, talking about reproductive isolation. Uh, reproductive isolation of, uh, there are uh, the organism of two different species. They cannot uh, reproduce among themselves to produce offspring. The two kinds of reproductive isolation that are there are prezygotic and the postzygotic type of uh, reproductive isolation. Prezygotic include timing behavior habitat, and the postzygotic type include the infertile hybrid offspring. So, 
prezygotic reproductive isolation this phenomena occurs in even before the fertilization has happened while the postzygotic occurs when the fertile the eggs have already been fertilized so talking about prezygotic so in case of prezygotic the organisms are separated even before the gametes have a chance to fertilize so there are different kinds of prezygotic isolation also one is the geographical isolation in this the geographical barrier is created so when there is a geographical barrier such as a mountain or a river species themselves cannot uh, re reproduce among themselves then there is this ecological isolation ecological isolation they are present in the similar habitat similar uh, area geographical area however in they occupy a different habitat in that particular area so uh, for example there are different kinds of lizard one kind of lizard they live on the trees and the other kind live on the ground so these two lizards the one that lives on the tree and the other one that lives on the ground they won't be able to reproduce among themselves so they are isolated ecologically due to the difference in habitat and this is how the reproductive isolation works in their case uh, then there is this temporal isolation this is the separation of time so the, the there's a there are breeding times or the breeding period of particular organism that happens so different organism are uh, uh, they have different reproducing durations or the seasons or the times of the day so there's that that gives a temporal isolation so and then there's a separation by behavior also how do they how are they behaving uh, at the time of you know uh, their breeding season <clears throat> Okay, and uh, if you talk about the postzygotic, in case of postzygotic, there is this uh, hybrid offspring. If e either the zygote does not survive itself, and if it survives, it is infertile. It cannot give rise to uh, more offspring. So the case closes over there. So if you talk about the stages of speciation, generally what happens is there is a single interbreeding population. Then the particular type of barrier occurs that creates isolation between a population. It can be a geographical, geographical isolation in case of allopatric and ecological isolation in case of sympatric population. Then what happens is after this isolation occurs, there's a genetic divergence between the population. Due to this uh, divergence, the phenomenon of uh, selection occurs. Okay, for and it it increases the reproductive isolation in species species of those isolated population and through this process a new species is developed and the process of speciation is completed um, then we come on to the uh, laws of evolution the first one is the hackel's law hackel's law states ontogeny recapitulate phylogeny so what is ontogeny ontogeny is basically that all the developmental events occur during existence of a living organism so when there is a living organism the developmental events will happen uh, what is what does this relate the ontogeny recapitulate phylogeny it says that when the embryo is developing to an adult during its development to the adult the individual they pass through the evolutionary stages that are similar to its ancestors okay so uh, in case of human embryo it progresses from a single cell and then to the higher level or higher stages okay and the the developmental stages that occur of during the development of human embryo it resembles that of a fish a reptile and then it finally forms a mammal so ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny so in this case the individual will pass through the evolutionary stages of its ancestors dolo's law it states that structures once lost they cannot be regained example is the will winglessness in fleas and lice so they are they are now wingless they you earlier they were not wingless cope's law states that 
organisms increase in size from their ancestors generally so there's a, a increase in size it leads to decrease in population decrease in biomass why this happens it happens because larger organisms they have less predators large size protects against smaller predators and then there's efficient food utilization and also the thermal inertia increases which leads to maintenance of a constant body temperature variation is basically a raw material for evolution why evolution occurs it occurs due to the process of variation that happens during the reproduction phase so we talk about causes of evolution uh, first one is the mutation we all are aware of it which are uh, basically different changes or rare events they usually have a damaging effect and this happens due to maybe radiation or some carcinogen carcinogen exposure or some viruses or changes in the gene structure the dna makeup next variation genetic variation happens in population of a particular gene uh, or an allele okay then natural through the process of natural selection given by charles darwin uh, preliminary forces jo hai they drive the natural selection is basically the most preliminary force that drives evolution so mutants that have harmful effects they are removed from the population however the mutants which have favorable effects they are passed on to the offspring uh based on this natural selection only the species property are selected and the others become extinct so talk example is that of peppered moth it was discovered by haldane and this occurred during industrial revolution this is the example of directional natural selection then there is micro evolution example in which it is artificially selected and a number of species are formed example is that of canis lupus talked earlier which was a wolf and then all breeds of dogs are uh, they occur or arise from this canis lupus so basically all dogs are wolves um an example of macro evolution what is macro evolution basically when two population can no longer interbreed among themselves then a new species is born example is that of galapagos prince da darwin's galapagos finches the that had different beak shape and sizes now let's talk about the types of natural selection there are different kinds of natural selection the three kinds are uh, directional stabilizing and disruptive in case of directional uh, it is for one extreme trait and it's against the other so uh, for directional uh, selection it favors one extremity over trait uh, over the other so one is completely removed and the other is completely favored this is how it uh, happens in case of stabilizing it is it does not you know favor any of the extremities it favors the moderate part of the trait so both extremities are removed and a middle ground is formed which increases in number and then about disruptive in disruptive it does not favor the middle ground it favors the extremities of the particular kind of trait so different two different kinds of traits are formed theek hai then uh talking about altruistic behavior altruistic behavior um uh, uh, in that uh, different you know species they have kin like uh, properties jaise sibling type ka ki they help each other grow or they help each other evolve aisa kind of happens so the different kinds of uh, altruistic behavior is first is the reciprocal altruism it is a mutual behavior in which one organism act in a particular way that allows the other um uh, organism to you know uh, occupy a particular niche in that case the first organism it temporarily reduces its own fitness and allows the increase in the other incoming organism fitness and there is an expectation that the other organism will act in the similar way so the advantage of this uh, reciprocal altruism is basically there is a stable social group okay there is a symmetry of interaction there is a good memory and there is a lot of opportunities for altruistic interaction 
Kin selection is also a type of altruistic behavior in this. Uh, <clears throat> it's a kind of evolutionary strategy. It favors the reproductive success of a particular organism relate, uh, relative. So a relative will, you know, give up its own survival and even reproduction to allow the success of its related, uh, its related organism. Example are ant and bees. They, their main aim is to, you know, ensure that the gene survive even if the organism dies. So that's it and it's a type of inclusive fitness. Example is, there's an alarm call by organism to warn the kin of approaching danger. So the, pers the organism that is sending out the alarm call will be recognized. However, the kin will be saved. <clears throat> Social insect colonies such as ants or advanced bees or wasps and then helpers at the nest. Uh, there's this Hamilton's rule and altruism. Uh, so uh, when is when this rule tells us when the altruism is favored by natural selection. So there's this equation which tells us when will uh, altruism behavior of the evoluting species will be favored. So what is is it is our relate the <clears throat> the product of relatedness between organisms and the benefit of recipient should be greater than the cost to altruist when the product of relatedness between organisms and the benefit to recipient is greater than the cost to altruist then the evolution or the natural selection process it favors natural selection in any other case, it will not favor natural selection of the altruistic behavior. Then uh, talking about the learning, this was basically uh, Pavlov's conditioning about the experiment. The classical conditioning in which the neutral stimulus paired with continue, uh, that is paired, con neutral stimulus is paired continuously with a neutral natural stimulus. It leads to the organism giving a response to the neutral stimulus also. So the experiment about uh, the dog bell food so bell is rung food is presented the dog salivates after a few months when the bell rings uh, the conditional response is salivation of the dog so there's this description uh, sometimes there's a it has the, the discrimination has a survival value so sometimes there's a random similar to conditional simulation two stimuluses can be there one is similar to the uh, similar to the conditional one or other one that is actually the original conditional stimulus talking about reflexes it basically uh, entails that every behavior is related to the reflex arc this we have studied in our younger classes so it is uh, the behavior is associated from any kind of association or a sim stimulus so stimulus generates the response and the response is repeated if beneficial. Two types of reflexes are conditions reflex, conditioned reflex, which is learned and acquired over the years through conditioning or through experiences. Unconditions are the ones that we are that we are born with, which are innate or inbuilt. That is our natural response. Conditional reflex are of three types. They occur due to three type, three reasons. One is in conditional inhibition, a uh, second is conditional acceptance, and the third one is conditional aversion. Conditional in case of conditional inhibition, the conditional it is a negative uh, conditioning. So in this, the conditional behavior is not shown by the organism due to some stimulus. Due to when a particular stimulus is present, the organism will not show a particular behavior. In conditional acceptance, the ind individual or the organism will perform a particular behavior in response to positive reinforcement. So conditional inhibition is negative reinforcement and conditional acceptance is positive reinforcement. So this conditional acceptance is used to intensify a particular behavior. Conditional aversion is that is basically negative reinforcement ki wajah se when the performance is reduced of an organism due to negative reinforcement.
The morphological species concept was given by Linnaeus. It was uh, discarded due to larval sexual dimorphism. Biological species concept was given by Ernst Meyer. Uh, genetic species concept uh, that stated that genetically identical species are same species. Uh, it was discarded because only monozygotes are genetically same. So genetically identical species are not same, same species. Then talking about the migration of birds, why it happens, uh, the benefit, like the outcomes of migration of birds, variability increases, adaptability increases, and then there's this evolutionary benefit as well. A uh, circannual rhythm is there for birds which occurs annually or uh, during that there's a movement with respect to food and seasons. There, there are different kinds of migration of birds. First uh, kind is the daily or the local. In the daily migration, the nesting area, say food area, again, then back to the nesting area, that happens. In case of seasonal uh, migration, change of season causes the birds to migrate, summer to winter, winter to summer, like that. Then uh, longitudinal, east-west, west-east, latitudinal, north-south, south. Latitudinal is the longest migration antarctic sorry huh. longest migration yeah antarctic basically that uh, the arctic tran species this uh, this species has the longest migration of 17600 kilometers the last type of migration is altitudinal which is also known as the vertical migration so how does this migration of birds occur? It occurs synchronously with certain factors of the environment such as day length or temperature or season or whatever. Due to these uh, factors, a particular uh, bird, it its body undergoes certain phases and then it recognizes that it needs to migrate and then the migration starts. So the first phase that happens is the preparatory phase. In the preparatory phase, so it, it is recognizing the changes in the temperature or the environment. Then the preparatory phase of the bird's body starts. That leads to the deposition of fat in the subcutaneous region, which is uh, the thoracic region in birds. It's also known as the fuel tank wherein uh, in the preparatory phase the energy storage begins and then in the second stage the endocrine system is activated which is uh, this endocrine system it senses the day length and the, the changes in the day length and the temperature of the environment this particular sensing is controlled by the hypothalamus part of the brain in the bird and it creates a migratory restlessness in the bird which is also known as zugun ruhe and uh, so this migratory restlessness, when this threshold is crossed, the migration of the birds start. So they start to migrate according to their kind of migration that they would want to achieve or their according to their requirement. Then there is one kind, uh, we talked about natural selection also. So now there is this kind of sexual selection also, where is, uh, wherein it is intersexual or intersexual. So, intersexual selection occurs within one particular sex and intersexual selection occurs between uh, like female chooses a male. So, competition between rivals, males between access to different mates. So, there are different, you know, selection techniques which occur. One is the dominance behavior which is shown by the alpha male. The alpha male of the species will have more access to the mating and female. Then there is female mimicry. The males which do not have uh, sexual dimorphism, they perform uh, external fertilization. For example, that in fishes. Male, they make the nest, they perform the dance, they are more energetic. Jitna uh, energetic, more they are energetic, they are, the larger is the nest. So more females are attracted to the nest and the female is laying the egg in the nest and the male then fertilizes the egg. So multiple eggs are fertilized. Pseudo females are there, the male that those have lesser energy they show characteristics similar to that of females and then they come together with the female uh, by behaving like female and then they fertilize their eggs then there's the satellite behavior um, 
it it happens in amphibian such as frogs there is a male collar which is collars they are called male collars which are larger in size they have high energy these attract females with the loud deep sounds okay and there are uh, the second kind is the non collar collars they are smaller size low energy and they are, they don't they, are, they don't have the ability to produce sound okay then there are switch hitters they produce sound also but they are smaller in size so when non collars they combine with switch hitters non collars which are smaller in size low energy no producing sounds they combine with switch hitters those produce sound and sound smaller in size they create a satellite so satellite is basically what which is smaller in size but produce sound and they sit hidden with the collars the larger ones so female is usually attracted to the collars however the satellite ones they grab the female and then mate with them amazing then use of repellents after mating the male uh, rub a chemical on the female body to ward off the rivals there's a copulatory plug after uh, copulation they block the reproductive tract of the female so that no other matlab the tissue system only matlab blocks the reproductive tract so this is how a uh, sexual selection occurs matlab these are the different examples of that talking about trivers review trivers view energy and time instrument in gametogenesis and in parental care is higher for females the time spent and the energy spent is for gametogenesis and their parenting that is more for females as compared to that of males so female have the privilege to choose their mates then there is dahani's handicap principle example of peacock tail which is long female usually prefer courtship with the ones with the uh, with the males that are handicap so the long take the long tape of tail of the peacock is usually uh, you know it uh, attract predators it is re resistance to fly so female prefer the male because he is strong enough to survive the you know harsh conditions it shows strength then presence of territory kitna territory the amount the territory shows strength and parental ability bright colors they show courtship behavior they indicate ha bright color also indicate the absence of parasite so a uh, basic overview of the darwin's finches it is example of adaptive radiation uh, happened in galapagos island south america adaptive radiation ke through it uh, went on to divergent evolution there was one flock of bird it gave rise to 13 new species through this adaptive radiation and three major categories were there of those 13 new species one was the ground finches uh, with six species three finch finches with six species again three sub categories and wobbler finches which was one particular species then uh, there is this this is the overview of the darwin's finches how they divided but uh, the into 13 species so this is one flock of birds the ground finches are covered over here the tree finches are covered over here and there is this wobbler finch okay so this is it for evolutionary biology i hope it helps um thank you so much